My name's Martin, and I study entomology at Cornell University. I'm here today to talk to you about tropical biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is just this huge term that we use to describe all life on Earth. Basically, we mean all of our species, all of our ecosystems, and all of our genetic information. There are 1.7 million described species on planet Earth, and there are close to 8 million more undiscovered. When I say ecosystems, I mean the communities of these species that I was talking about, where they live, and how they interact with one another. When I say genetic information, I mean all the variation in genes between species and within species. So genetic variation within humanity, we're talking differences of hair color, eye color, everything. Biodiversity is an important and interesting topic on its own. So why are we talking about tropical biodiversity? Well, as it turns out, most of Earth's biodiversity is in the tropics. So 80 to 90% of Earth's species live in tropical areas. So most of this life is concentrated in tropical rainforests. And tropical rainforests only cover 14% of the Earth's surface. That's an area of the world smaller than the USA. The country I'm from, Ecuador, is actually smaller than the state of Colorado, but has more than twice the number of plant and animal species than the US and Canada combined. The red and yellows on this map show vertebrate diversity across the world. As you can see, the tropics are hotbeds of biological diversity. So when I say tropics, what do I mean? The tropics are a band that go through the center of the earth between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. When I say tropics, most people imagine hot, muggy rainforests. Now it's true rainforests are important ecosystems in the tropics, but it's not everything. Coral reefs, highland savannas, and tropical cloud forests are also really important. In cloud forests, a single tree can have up to 2,000 different species of fungi, plants, and animals on it. Biodiversity in the tropics is important for the livelihoods and future of all people on Earth. Some of the things I'm gonna talk about that the tropical ecosystems give us are ecosystem services, important crops, and technology and medicine. Ecosystem services are products or services that nature provides that have real value for us humans. For example, trees in the Amazon rainforest have been called the lungs of our world because they actually trap a lot of the harmful CO2 gases that are causing global warming just by their natural process of photosynthesis. Important pollinators like honeybees provide a lot of the crops that we eat all over the world, and a lot of these come from the tropics. Things like cacao, which we use to produce chocolate, vanilla, citruses like oranges, clementines. Worldwide, the value of pollination is placed at $217 billion. Just as exciting are the potentials for using natural models for design and innovation of technology. In the temperate zone, this annoying burr was actually the original model for Velcro. More recently, architects in Harare, Zimbabwe have designed the air conditioning system of a building using termite mounds as a model. So as it turns out, you can look at the air ventilation systems in termite mounds to design air conditioning for buildings. The results have saved the architects millions in air conditioning expenses. Insects, plants, fungi, and bacteria from the tropics have provided us with many of the medicines that we use today. One example that is actually from the temperate zone is aspirin. Aspirin is a drug we use every day, and originally it was derived from the bark of the willow tree. Before we had aspirin, Native Americans would drink a tea made out of willow bark to alleviate pain. An example from South America is the quinine tree. So the quinine tree has actually saved thousands of lives by combating malaria. Scientists have actually derived treatment for HIV AIDS using a marine sponge from Panama. So with so much life yet to be discovered in the tropics, the potential to find new medicine and technology is practically limitless. As you can see, the tropical regions of our planet have given us so much and have so much more to give. The problem is that these ecosystems are among the most threatened and fragile on our planet. 80,000 acres of tropical rainforest, the equivalent of 60,000 football fields, are lost every day due to logging and other human activities. And it's not just rainforests. Tropical coral reefs, highland savannas, and cloud forests are all facing serious threats. As these habitats get destroyed, we're losing the unique and often unstudied organisms that inhabit them. According to UN Convention on Biodiversity, we lose 50 species of plants and animals every day. 
So one example of the degradation of tropical ecosystems are things like mines and petroleum extraction. They're actually extremely dangerous when carried out in places like Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, and Peru. So when you open a mine in a place like Ecuador in the cloud forest, the impacts are devastating. You can have contamination of the rivers with heavy metals like cadmium, arsenic, and lead, but you can also have desertifications of whole areas. When you lose tropical cloud forests, you never can regain it. It actually goes away forever. Local people are impacted in really negative ways. But today, companies from the US, Canada, and China are looking for deposits of copper and gold all over South America. So biodiversity doesn't just impact me in Ecuador, it impacts everyone all over the world. When I was a kid, what we would do is set up a nightlight. It's something that you can do in your home as well. All you have to do is put up a white sheet and aim a bright light at it. Moths and other insects will come. To discover biodiversity in your backyard, try making a nightlight like I did when I was a kid and see what shows up.